Welcome to the live demo section. My name is Gijs Bidjansen van Doorn, and I'm going to guide you how Zerto works together with Microsoft Azure. Now, in the previous session or in the previous presentation, you've seen how the Zerto architecture works and how it replicates every single change to a different location, whether that's local or remote. And in this case, I'm actually replicating VMs applications to Azure. Now, Zerto is completely SLA driven. That means every single application I protect in a protection group, or as we call virtual protection group, has an SLA defined. And right now for all the applications I'm protecting, everything's green. So that me it means I'm meeting my SLA. And if you look carefully to somewhere around the uh, top right side of the screen, you can see the efforts RPO. So I'm currently achieving an RPO of six seconds for average RPO of six seconds across all the applications I protect, even going into Azure. I can see some real life statistics of what are what is the current change rate I'm protecting, what's the throughput I'm processing, and what is the one traffic or the 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 amount of traffic I'm sending to my remote location. If I click on virtual protection groups, I can actually see all the applications or all the protection groups I defined uh, where they are replicated to. For example, I've got two, uh, two uh, applications replicating into Azure and the actual RPO we're achieving right now. So as I said before, RPOs are measured in seconds, even going to Microsoft Azure. I'm also replicating some um, applications locally. I'm also replicating applications to a remote uh, VMware site, but I'm going to focus today on the Microsoft Azure component of it. So as you will see, I've got different sites, ZVMs or ZCAs, as you've seen in a previous session. So I've got one vCenter uh, attached to it, and of course an Azure site attached to it as well, me replicating into Azure. This, this allows me to select Azure as a target. If we go to setup, I can actually see the virtual replications, the virtual replication appliances I have installed on my on-premises deployment, my VMware deployment. But I can also configure long-term retention repositories. And actually, I've got a long-term retention repository configured going into Microsoft Blob Storage. So this is used to store my long-term retention copies. So right now I've got nine of those resource points in Azure. So making sure that I can also recover from them using the restore operation. But like I said, I'm going to focus on our replication capability into Azure. Because as you can see, I am replicating two applications into Azure. So when we go and look at the details of these applications, and I can even zoom into the application and see application specific KPIs, but let's look at how I configure the protection of such an application. I'll start with a name. VPG name. I've called it Web Application Cloud DR. Priority is high, and this is for bandwidth control, quality of service, you name it. Now, the next step is that I need to define the VMs, the virtual machines I want to protect or want to replicate into Azure. Now, right now I only have one, but I can select multiple. I could select three, four, five, six, multiple dozen of applica uh, of VMs. Uh, protected by this single application group. And remember how I talked about application consistency grouping? This is what gives you that application consistency grouping because every single VM in this group will be recovered to the exact same point in time. I can define a boot order, making sure that my database server starts first and my web server starts next. Now, as soon as I've selected the VMs, I can go into where I want to replicate to. So right now I'm replicating into Azure. So this is the IP address of my Zerto cloud appliance in Azure, and it allows me to define the SLA. So right now I want to keep a journal history of one day. So I'm keeping one day worth of changes in our journal in Azure. My RPO, or at least my target RPO is five minutes. So I want to make sure that as soon as I don't hit five minutes anymore, I'll get alerted. And I put my test reminder on six months. So that means that if I haven't tested my failover, because let's be honest, you don't really have disaster recovery if you don't test it. So I'm going to be reminded every six months. And if I don't perform a failover test, 
I will keep on getting reminded. So I won't be able to meet my SLA if I don't test it every six months. This is very important, especially auditors love this feature. The next step uh, shows me the disks. So how many disks do I have attached to this VM? How big is it? Uh, do I want to mark it as temporary data? This is very useful, for example, for databases. Databases have temp databases. They um, they they gather a, or they generate a lot of I/O, but you don't need to replicate that I/O, so you could mark that as temporary data. Now the next step is my recovery settings. So, if I recover into Azure, what are those predefined things that I want Zerto to set up for me? So, for example, I want to make sure that this VM gets um, created in the right VNet, uses the, the, the right subnet, uses the right, applies the right security group, has the right disk type, but also has the right virtual machine or instance size. So whenever I perform a failover, this is how it will be recovered. Now, as I explained earlier, we also have a workflow for failover test. So for failover test, we could actually use different settings. Do I want to recover to an isolated VNet? Do I maybe want to recover to a lower spec virtual machine, um, saving me on cost, uh, achieving a better uh, uh, TCO? And I can uh, predefine every single piece of this. So as soon as you hit that failover button, you are ensured that we'll use the right settings, the settings that you predefined. The next step is networking settings. Uh, do I want to use DHCP in Azure? Do I want to assign a fail uh, an IP to the network adapter? Uh, you've got the option to do both. So you can even change the IP address as you go into Azure. So that's all part of that recovery process. The next step is showing you a summary of all the changes you made or all the settings you made. And if you want to go and start the initial replication, you simply click done. Now, of course, this application is already replicating into Azure, um, into Azure blob storage, again, using page blobs for the, the replica disk, using block blobs for the journal data. Now, as soon as I hit failover, and I'll actually start to initiate a failover next, um, I get the other options. I get options to rewind back in time using that journal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform a test failover of this specific application, and I'm going to rewind it back in time. So what I'm going to do is I click next, because this is the application I want to failover test. So I want to initiate the test workflow into Azure. So it shows me, okay, this is the name. Um, you're replicating into Azure. Okay, so I'm going to perform that failover test into Azure, and this is where I can select a different point in time. Simply click that point in time, and it allows me to go back. Every few seconds, we have a point in time that I can rewind to. You can see how powerful this is. You can see how granular this is. So what I'm actually going to do, I'm going to rewind back a couple of hours. Simply click OK, next. Next, and that's it. Those are the only steps I need to take to be able to recover this application into Azure. Now I'll simply click Start Failover Test, and it will start the failover test. And nothing happens to my production environment because, again, this is a test, right? So I'm not um, failing it over. I'm not doing anything with my production VM. This is all to initiate that failover test. So let's start that failover test. Now, while this is running, what is happening? So a VM is created, a resource group is created. We make sure that we rewind that disk to how it was a few hours ago. We'll attach that disk to a VM, we'll start that VM, and we'll show it to you in Azure. Now, this process takes a couple of minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to show you how to configure uh, long-term retention going into Azure. So using a local uh, continuous backup using our CDP engine, and then use Azure to store points in time for a longer amount of time on, well, from a cost-effective point of view. So let's go into an application that I have configured for local backup. So this is my ERP application. I configured that one for local backup. I go into Edit VPG, and basically I get the same settings to configure uh, that you've seen with the previous one. So as you can see, I selected a couple of VMs. I'm protecting three VMs. I'm replicating it into my own site, a local VMware site. So this is a local protection. I set my journal history, uh, my SLA settings. I click next. Uh, 
things for my disks to configure network so I can recover into a different network. As you can see, this adopts to what platform I'm replicating to. I can again change IP addresses if I want to upon failover or upon failover test, but this has an additional option called long-term retention. So what this basically do, does is I'll simply enable it. I select a repository and as you can see, I've configured the Azure repository going into Azure. I'm doing even file system indexing, but that's if you want to know more about that, um, look at some of our, our YouTube videos. So what I'm doing right now is like every day, I'm going to take a copy of that, of a point in time, store that for seven days. And then every week, I'm going to take a full copy of my uh, uh, virtual machines and store it for four weeks. So this is really focused on the more long-term retention folk, um, um, long-term retention schemes like father, grandfather, father, son type of things. And what I'm actually doing is I'm storing that data into Azure Blob Storage. So I'm using the cloud for backup, backup to cloud storage. Really efficient way to do backups. Now, if I click done right now, I'm going to focus again on my virtual protection group. And as you can see, my web application is failing over into Azure. So let's take a look at Azure because I've got Azure open right here to portal. Let's go look at virtual machines. Now let's go and have a look at the resource group. So we create a resource group for you called web application. So the same name as the application that we're actually recovering, the VPG that we're recovering. And as you can see, we already created a web 01 testing recovery. Um, it's a it's a web server. It's, it's running in the cloud right now. We can look into it. We called it testing recovery because we're running a failover test. And that's it. That it's that easy to actually run a failover, run a failover test going into Azure. And it doesn't matter whether it's one VM, 20 VMs, 30 VMs, or a couple of hundred VMs, because Zerto uses skill sets to scale, we can still perform that within minutes. So what I can do right now is I can stop that failover test because, hey, I'm testing the failover. I've tested it. Um, I can reach my application. I'll simply stop it. It was a great success. So click stop. Now what it will actually do is it will stop the failover. It will clean up the environment. So as we go and look at the virtual machines and at the resource groups, you'll see it disappear. Right now it's still running. Of course, it takes a couple of minutes to shut it down. So what we'll do is we'll clean up that VM, we'll clean up the um, resource groups and everything will be back to normal again. So you don't actually uh, uh, need to keep that resources because you're done testing the failover. Now, as soon as we've tested that failover, there's one other thing we do is we report on it. And that's very important, especially for auditing purposes, because many organizations will have to prove that they've actually performed a failover test and that the failover test has been successful. Now, if you go into reports section of the Zerto interface and you go to recovery reports, you'll see that I've done a successful failover test and the RTO for my application for actually getting that application up and running in Azure from my VMware site has been two minutes and 33 seconds. If I download it, I can export it to PDF. I can open it. And as you can see, I'll get an extensive report on how my failover test went. So who did it? When did they do it? To what point in time did they go back? What were all the settings we've done in the background? So this gives you the ability to prove that you've done the test and also show that the, set, the test was successful. So hopefully you've been able to see how fast Zerto can recover into Azure, how we can use Azure as a long-term retention repository. Um, this was all I could demo in 15 minutes. I, uh, I consider this quite impressive doing a full failover into Azure with only a couple of minutes. If you want to know more, run our hands-on labs or reach out to us for an, uh, a guided proof of concept. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you enjoy this event. Thank you.